Hello, kia ora. I'm Philip Duncan. It is Friday, July the 4th. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the weekend. We've got this large low out in the Tasman Sea. You can very clearly see it on the satellite map directly west of Taranaki, well out here in the Tasman Sea. Now this main area of low pressure is shrinking and weakening and it moves into the country by the time we get into the weekend and then it falls apart. There's a secondary area of low pressure forming off the coast of the South Island. That's getting a bit stronger, but that's gonna drop away uh, as well. So we've got low pressure falling apart, high pressure on the way in, but we've still got to deal with all of the low pressure around us for today, Friday, and going into the start of the weekend. Another main feature to notice, most of the heavy rain that you can see here in the yellow and the gold, those show the biggest, highest clouds, that's all moving away. So all of that widespread rain we saw right across large portions of New Zealand yesterday, that is now gone. What's left behind are smaller, but maybe more intense downpours. So you can see these isolated thunderstorms out at sea going around this low pressure zone and these clouds change shape as they move along. So what you see on the map here is not what it will look like when it comes on in. So that's why you have gotta pay attention to the rain radar today of all days because you'll see some new surprises and maybe some of these bigger downpours that look like they're rocketing in towards you may also fall apart. So there's quite a few moving parts going on today, but obviously the top of the South Island, top of the Northwestern area is most exposed. Although worth noting, the sun's out at the moment, at least when we recorded this, around Auckland and Northern parts of New Zealand, while Southern areas stay mostly dry as they've been. So this is how we look on uh, the Friday evening setup. So you can see the two areas of low pressure very clearly. The one in the Tasman is still the largest one this evening the one out to the southeast of Dunedin, that is the new one that's kind of getting, uh, that, that's forming as it moves away from us. So this one in the Tasman, that is going to fall apart. High pressure behind it is bulldozing in. Another high pressure zone over here. So it's just gonna get squeezed from both sides and end up uh, being sort of decimated. Mild northwesterly winds for Friday around the North Island, not as mild in the lower South Island, and for perhaps some of you in between, and we will see a few showers developing around the country as all of that low pressure brings in some instability. So noon tomorrow, noon Saturday, spot the two lows. The original Tasman Sea one is here off the coast of Waikato in Auckland, and the newly formed one, southeast now of the Chatham Islands, being stretched out, taken away from us as it goes back down towards the Southern Ocean. So what does this setup mean? It means a few showers coming in from the Tasman Sea for the upper North Island. They could still be a little bit heavy. Thunderstorm risk is probably tapering off, but wouldn't rule it out still. When you've got low pressure, daytime heating, you might get a thunderstorm or at least just some heavy downpours around the North on Saturday. But in the South Island, high pressure sneaks into the Southern half Southland, Otago, Fiordland, South Westland. It moves into Canterbury with a southerly or even an easterly change, south to southeasterly, and that moves up into the North Island as we go through Saturday. So there is a cooler change moving in. So those of you in dry parts of Hawke's Bay and some dry parts of Manawatu, Wanganui, you might get a chance of some wet weather. It doesn't look like a huge amount, but you might get a heavy fall. And by Sunday, that low is basically out here to the east, pretty weak. Um, north of the Chatham Islands. And so uh, the South Island's got light winds with high pressure increasing. The North Island's got a southeasterly or a southerly wind. That could be quite sunny for a number of regions, except for the East Coast. And that's where you've still got cloud and a few showers, mostly Northern Hawke's Bay uh, up towards about Gisborne. And in the very lower South Island, your temperatures will be dropping because the clearer skies, the lighter winds due to high pressure. So we may see some decent frost around uh, going into next week. Uh, again, mostly inland though, we haven't seen a lot of really heavy coastal frost this year. And the uh, top of the North Island, as I said yesterday, has had few, if not none, you know, no frost so far. Now look, as we go into the start of next week, the high is certainly in charge, frosty weather through the interior, uh, not as cold in the North Island, unless you're on the East Coast, wider up or up to East Cape, getting that cooler wind uh, straight off the sea from actually the s south of New Zealand over the Chatham Islands straight on in. That ma makes it sunny for many other places. Taranaki, King Country, Waikato, Auckland, parts of Northland as well. And apart from a couple of isolated showers around the South Island, it is dry. But you see the storms down here. Next big cold change coming in to Western Australia. They've had a number of cold fronts in recent weeks. And yes, a new low out here in the Tasman Sea. But the headline really going into next week 
is about all the low pressure forming south of Australia. This is the first time we've had uh, in a number of months a, a very large pool of low pressure that is perhaps more dominant than the high pressure. Still some really big highs. That's what our Climate Watch update this month said. July is full of very big lows like this and really large high pressure systems like that one out over the Indian Ocean, even this one here, 1037 hectopascals. That's a pretty strong high for our part of the world. And so that extends up over the country. But as it does that, as it goes all the way up to Fiji, hello, Fiji, uh, there down comes some of that airflow, maybe just a little south of Fiji around Tonga, some of that airflow curving around, coming down west of the country. So that means as we go through next week, and that high moves eastwards, we get the warmer airflow returning once more. Now it's not maybe as big as the one we've just had, as far as how subtropical it was, but this is an airflow here that is coming out of the subtropical region and into New Zealand, and it's fueling, uh, well not fueling, but it's mixing in with the, the large storms down here. It's a decent storm next to Tasmania. So what that does is it creates all this windy weather, and changes with temperatures. So a lot of westerly driven weather in this map, but the blue line, that's the polar boundary covering a part of the southeast corner of Australia. New Zealand's on the mild side of it, dry for most places on Wednesday, high pressure is over us, but you can see these rain clouds trying to move in from the west and they sort of do, falling apart. Remember that's high pressure just near the north of New Zealand. So rain bands moving in will get weaker and weaker the further northwards they go up New Zealand uh, around the middle of next week. But this is a giant pool of low pressure. That's why I'm showing you the map down to Antarctica, Antarctica, because the Southern Ocean, which hugs Antarctica, uh, normal to see all the storms down there, but what we're seeing now is those storms expanding right up. There's no high pressure belt that's strong enough to keep them down to the south, and so that brings in the windy westerlies, and that's what we see here. Southwesterlies, northwesterlies in Australia, wintry conditions for them, and New Zealand's got the milder nor'westers on Thursday, not very strong in most places, picking up through Cook Strait, picking up a little bit in the lower South Island, and we jump to Friday next week, and all of that low pressure that's been ballooning out south of us comes up here into the Tasman Sea. So it's not necessarily a new big Tasman Sea low, although that is there, but it's it's coming from out of Australia, from out of the south. So it's a little bit different, doesn't have as much, by the looks of it here, as much of that heavy tropical rain. So this could be more of a waking up of winter to some degree, but you know, we're still on the warmer side of things. Australia's the place getting the cold southerlies. We, on the other hand, these are all northerly winds coming down for the end of next week. So we'll be watching that closely, but we've had, um, at least as far as a nation, as a nation, we have not had a lot of polar or big southerly changes this year, but I do hear you in the South Island. You've had plenty, and they've been coming up into the lower North Island as well, but they haven't really been lingering as much as they could do. Next seven days rainfall, three main areas to look for. We'll start at the bottom of the scale in the white or the pink. That covers a huge part of like Southland, Otago and South Canterbury, central Otago, no rain at all. And you're seeing parts of Wairarapa, Manawatu, uh, and even uh, going over towards Whanganui, not seeing as much rain in those areas. The next area is in the blue. So most places that you see in the blue, the dark blue here, 10, 20, maybe 30 millimeters. So that's fairly normal rainfall for a week ahead. But you've also got these other areas in the brighter shading and those could be producing some heavier falls. Some of that could be today as that uh, system still unwinds. Most of it will be today and Saturday uh, on the rain map here, but not a huge amount of rain showing up for the next seven days. So it's a messy forecast, but not overly complicated when you actually look at what we're having here in New Zealand, despite all the large low pressure zones that are swirling around. That is all from me for this week. Have yourselves a great weekend. I'll see you again next week.